Okay, so I was planning to do a video on dual desktop operating systems and uh, when I went to check my cables, I've got two of these, or I had two of these, and uh, this is a micro HDMI to full size HDMI and I've used these for ages and the one, the particular one that uh, had broken, the actual end bit had just got really, really flexible and it wasn't giving a signal anymore. So I ordered some more, but when I was looking, I figured I'd have a look and see if there was another way of getting full size HDMI uh, on the Pi, because I'm aware that you can do it with a case, uh, so I've got it here on a Desk Pi Pro case, this isn't in its case at the moment, and uh, when I had a look, I found this one, this board here, and this has got two full-size HDMIs, it's got the uh, audio jack, or obviously this is the Pi, and uh, this black bit on the end is an SD card extender, so that's something separate again, but it's a way of getting every single connection on one side of the Pi, so everything you need is all on one side. Now, it's not particularly useful for me, but I figured that it would be just a different way of doing things. Uh, you can do it where the SD card is on the other side, so without this extender. I suppose if you had a system where you needed the SD card, uh, but everything else you could leave just plugged in and you wanted it to be say at the back So all of this can go behind a cabinet. In fact in my new monitor setup uh, on this arm It could be underneath and nothing is coming out in the front. So that that's actually quite a nice setup um, But I I do often use the USB sockets But I could always use an extension to be able to get USB sockets out of it But it's just it's another option. It might be useful for someone um, but uh, you can see that it's got these basically sockets that go into the existing plugs that are there and even the three and a half mil jack and there's nothing else in setup and I've tried it on various different things and it, it just seems to be a physical connection so I haven't had any issue with it at all so I'm actually quite impressed with it because it's very cheap so it was $8.99 uh, was the board um, but I ended up buying the one with the case uh, so I ended up paying $14.99 to get an acrylic case. It comes with some heat sinks, but I'm not a big believer in, in these stick-on heat sinks on the Pi. And uh, in fact, taking them off, I think it was this board or one of the others, was, uh, was not a pleasant experience. It was very hard to get off and I was worried I was gonna actually unseat the, uh, the GPU or the CPU or anything like that. So I was, it wasn't great, but it comes with a fan as well. And these fans are the Geek Pi ones that come with the ice, ice tower cooler. And they're actually quite nice fans. They're LED and they're pretty quiet. So, uh, and it's got some rubber feet in there so you can isolate it. And it's acrylic -y bits. Uh, you've got a load of standoffs in there. And I'll build it as a case anyway, because uh, I'm interested to see what it's like. But I've also bought some more of these and I bought a different one this time. And it does seem more substantial. It's definitely a thicker cable. It's about 20 centimeters long. Uh, and it's micro HDMI to HDMI, but hopefully this doesn't go the same way as this other one. This one I got off um, eBay. Um, and interestingly, they, so they were $6.99 uh, for two of these, which I thought was quite a good price. Uh, but as soon as I buy them, uh, Amazon puts the price down. They're now £5.24, uh, so uh, quite a lot cheaper. So let's have a look at the DeskPi Pro case again, though. So I thought this was going to be the same as what was in a DeskPi Pro case, um, but it's not. The DeskPi Pro case does it very differently. Um, so you can see the Pi, uh, you've got this SD card adapter which actually connects on, and it has a ribbon cable that goes over to this main board, and this main board has got a new SD card slot, and it's one of the spring-mounted ones which I really quite like, uh, a couple of USB 2s and a power connection. So just a different different way of doing things, um, but this also was a way of getting all the connections on the back apart from the SD card, but then you do have USB and power sockets. I do like the DeskPi Pro case. So with this case, you also get some very basic instructions, but it doesn't need a lot. It just tells you where the standoffs are, uh, super simple. But yeah, 899 for just that. So if you want full size HDMIs, uh, I did also think I'd put it inside my cluster case but with the SD card on the right side it does make it too small so like this that's fine so that works and I've got full-size HDMI's on this side um, but uh, because the fan is at the back of this you can't get to the SD card so that's why you need one of these uh, which I've done in a separate video um, but that basically fits inside the SD card slot so inside here, it's a cool design, uh, and then that gives you an SD card slot right at the front. And so if I, and it's spring-loaded as well. 
and obviously it's flapping about here but when you screw it all together it makes it nice and solid and that is exactly what I'm doing in this one but I'm using micro HDMI not too much of a problem so my power comes off to the left hand side as does the HDMI and for dual monitor support I've got the other HDMI so I can plug another cable in there and I still have the USB sockets at hand which I guess my use case is a bit different because I'm always messing about, I'm always making different videos on Raspberry Pis and so if you have a situation where you often don't change much about the Raspberry Pi, maybe just the SD card in the front and you leave everything else plugged in, this is probably a really good option. So let's have a look at building the case and see what that works like. Okay, so you've got to take all the protective covers off the acrylic that keeps it nice and shiny. And these are a different height on the outside because they've got the breakout board which is slightly higher than the Pi. So all these are the same height. So that should pop on. I need to unplug this. Yeah, so that sits nice and flat on there. Think about where the fan cable goes and I would imagine probably going like this because the GPIO pins are near the top end, so I would think that's probably the tidiest. I think I'm going to go with 3.3 volt because uh, I sometimes use the Pi passively, um, but I, would, I just want to cut down the fan noise really. So 3.3 volt and the ground, there we go. I'm just going to plug that in to see that it spins up. Yeah, that's spinning and it's nice and quiet. Yeah, that is a tidy setup. It does look nice, doesn't it, with the uh, with the fan in the top. It is super quiet if I get it near my microphone. It's pretty hard to hear at all. Uh, because at the front you have the lights very visible, I like that as well uh, for disc access. And then also the SD card slot looks pretty accessible there. Let's just try and plug one in. Yeah, it's pretty good. Don't know about getting one out. You might have to use your, your yeah, it's difficult to get a card slot out. Uh, although I need to let it boot now. Uh, but uh, that's not as accessible. And then obviously on the back, everything is there. So uh, three and a half mil jack, USB-C, two full size HDMIs, and then all the normal ports on the Pi. Yeah, overall pretty happy with that for 15 pound. Yeah, that would be the only thing I'd change. <laughs> that's not very accessible. It's doable but it is a pain to be able to take out an SD card. Uh, so you can see I've got it out now. You have to get your nail in and get the little ridge on the SD card. So that's definitely something I would change about this case. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with the way it looks. Uh, not so great about the accessibility for the micro SD slot, so it depends on your usage. But the fact that you can put all the cables tidily out of the way, uh, it does make for a nice tidy setup. So I might see what else I can do uh, with this toolkit, uh, which has got loads of standoffs and screws and various different things in it, and see what other configurations I can come up with. I thought I'd try plugging in a USB stick into the USB port that it adds to the front, but it doesn't recognize it in Raspberry Pi OS. And there's also a power section here as well. So whether it needs to be powered or whether it takes uh, USB from the GPIO pins or something, I'm not sure, quite sure how it works. I thought maybe it was taking it through the USB-C um, and adding data through that way, but it doesn't seem to detect it at all. But anyway, I hope you like this. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.